world approached, one that was dark and cold. It would consume us, for we were flesh, and flesh is frail. Though suits and shields might offer comfort, such adornments would not suffice, not to save us all. So we sought to change what we were. In this manner, we might thrive in a world made poisonous. It was Aita who volunteered to see if it might be done. Aita, my husband, my love. In the end, it changed him, ruined him. He was made a prisoner of the machines. The body might survive, but his mind became brittle to the touch. He begged me for release, for days, for weeks, for months. I pleaded with him to give us time to find another way. But, but there, there wasn't, wasn't one. one. Not, Not for, for him. him. Not, Not for, for us. us. Consciousness is a series of electrical impulses, and the body a vessel to hold these sparks. But it is weak. In time, it decays and crumbles into dust. We asked ourselves then, what if it might be replaced with something stronger, something better? So we forged a new vessel, one that might endure. It proved easy enough to enter. But to leave, to leave required something more, something wrong. And so this too they abandoned. I wondered though. Were they right to turn away? Home stretch, Desmond. I can feel it. 
The tides of war are turning. The Loyalists fall back beneath the advancing Patriot army, their hold on this land weakening by the day. But the Templars only seem to grow stronger. Though fewer in number, the threat they pose appears undiminished. Making matters worse, Washington chose to spare the life of Charles Lee. I am told he has taken refuge inside Fort George, and so my days are spent searching for a way to breach its walls. Of my father, there is no trace, and I am glad of it. If I can be rid of Lee, there may still be a chance for reconciliation. And through it, peace. Connor, he's asking for you. Hello, Connor. <gasps> Come now. Your sadness won't sustain me any more than that fool woman's soups and potions. Tell me of your latest exploits. Charles Lee has been exposed and the Patriots finally rid of him. They march now to secure the remaining cities that this country might finally be free. Then you have won. The land and your people are safe. Yet you seem troubled. Washington spared Lee's life. So long as he lives, all are in danger. The same is true for your father. When you first came to me, you understood what had to be done, swore you'd see it through. If not for the Brotherhood, for your people, and all those threatened by the Templars. But with Lee gone, my father might... Listen to me. You have not come this far to throw it all away over misplaced sentiment. Both men must die. Achilles. There is nothing more to discuss. Connor, I came as soon as I could. Tell me you bring good news. The Comte de Grasse said yes. You need only join his fleet in Chesapeake Bay and they will serve as required. But what exactly is it you intend? It's better that I show you. Charles Lee may have been dismissed. But it does not mean we are safe. But the commander? The commander underestimates the threat, and no more time can be wasted trying to convince him otherwise. I must do this on my own. Do what, exactly? Kill Charles Lee. He hides within Fort George, which is itself surrounded by a militarized district. I cannot hope to infiltrate it directly. So I will go under instead. Incroyable. The tunnels leading to the fort have been filled in. While I secure the Admiral's ships, I need you to clear them for me. And the ships? When signaled, they will bombard the fort. Breaching its walls and creating a distraction, I see. In the chaos, I will slip inside, find Charles Lee, and silence him forever.
Remembering old times, Achilles? Connor. Oh, yes. I suppose I was. Seems like so long ago. Who was the assassin this belonged to? Originally, it was John de la Tours, the first assassin in the colonies. Then it was mine for a time. Ah, uh, the things I've done wearing that armor. Some are uplifting to recall, others very painful indeed. One day, I will hand it over to you, Connor. It is your duty to keep it. It serves as a reminder for how long our brotherhood has really been here. How long we've been protecting the people of this land. But here I am going on again. I know you appreciate what it is. Day, Connor. I left some bolts of fine silk in my old home. They are very valuable, but I don't think it wise I return there. Someone might wind up dead. I was hoping you could retrieve them for me if you had time. Connor! I have the tools you requested. Ah, excellent. I'll get right to work. Norris has been hanging around pestering me about his knife. <laughs> I thought you should know I overheard some regulars talking. They are looking for you. I imagine they are. I'll have to face them sometime or another. Excuse me. Might I impose upon the kindness in your heart to give bed and board to a weary traveler? Oh, traveler from where? Across an ocean. London. English! <laughs> Rest assured, I'm not the king's man. A great kindness. Bless you. We work hard for what we have here, old man. What is it you do exactly? I wish to provide God for those who seek his salvation, not spoon-feed his word to those who already have their own. An outlook not shared by the monarchy. Lord knows some of us have things to confess. Ollie and I have been missing our Sunday Mass. I'd like Maria to read the Bible. I'm sure if we all pitched in, we could build a church. If you'd be our pastor. Connor? Welcome, Minister... Father. Father Timothy. Bless you. 
This will build a fine place of worship. I am most grateful. I don't mean to be a bother, but I wanted to ask you something. When my cart went up in flames, I lost most of my tools. I've got some spares back at my shop in Boston, but as you know, I'm not really welcome around there. I thought if it wasn't too much trouble, you could help me retrieve them? What would you have me do? Watch my back while I gather them. Meet me in Boston at my old shop. Prudence, are you all right? What are you Connor, doing out here in the woods? Thank goodness! The baby's coming! We need to get you to Dr. White. No! I can't move! Take my horse! Bring him here! Go! Dr. White, come with me now. What's wrong? Prudence is in labor in the forest. In the forest? What in bloody hell is she doing out there? Does not matter. We need to get Warren. Now? Yes! Warren! Are you here? Over here. What's the trouble? Where is she? Tell me how she seemed to you. In great pain. She could not move herself. Was she pale? Was there blood? Not that I saw. Might be we have some time. We must hurry! Hello, Doctor. I think I can manage at the moment. Is she all right, Doctor? No, she's not all right. She's having a baby and here by the looks of it.
be his. Looks to be in fine health as well. Has a good set of lungs on him. <laughs> no, I don't mean to rush you, but we need to get both you and... Does he have a name yet? Hunter. You will like it. Gunner! Horace, what are you doing out here? I want to give Miriam her knife. Maybe you come with me? Of course. What is keeping you? I am nervous. I am certain she will love the blade you made for her. What am I doing? Giving a woman a knife as a gift? It's so stupid. This is something she will appreciate and use. Ugh. I made the stupid thing. I might as well give it to her. Hello, Miriam. Hello, Norris. Hello, Connor. I'd love to stay and chat, but I promised Ellen a bale of furs this week, and I'm not even close to making good. I need to get out into the bush right away. Two hunters are better than one. I can help if you like. Would you? I'd be much obliged. I, uh, I bring something for you. Maybe uh, it will help. I really must get moving. I will thank you properly when I get back. Until then... Meet me at my northernmost hunting blind after you take your first skin. Yama. Time for forgiveness has passed. Please don't kill me. I'll never come back. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. I'm... I will come back again. I swear it. Please, mister. If I hadn't had this blade, that lickspittle might have gutted me. A timely gift from Norris, it would seem. Indeed. I must make sure to thank him properly. Lafayette promised me a fleet beyond compare and a captain without peer. Instead, I find myself greeted by one old ship and a boy in costume. I promise we are all you need, Admiral. I doubt this very much, but beggars do not choose. Mm -hmm. And the ships I require? They are yours, provided we survive this. Well, what would you have me do? Hold the bay while I engage the main fleet. Should any British ships dare approach, destroy them. They must be kept from Yorktown. Enemy approaching! All right, boys! Make ready for war! 